A team of scientists with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, have confirmed the discovery of a new gelatinous marine animal just off the coast of Puerto Rico. The species of tenophore was first seen during a remote underwater expedition in 2015. They are also known as cone jellies. The researchers described the creature as resembling a hot air balloon that moves across the sea floor. NOAA says it's the first time it's scientists scientists have identified a new species using only high-definition video. For more on this, let's bring in Dr. Michael Ford. He's an oceanographer with NOAA Fisheries. He's also one of the scientists who made the discovery. Dr. Ford, welcome. Thanks so much for being with us. What more can you tell us about this new species of comb jelly? Sure. Um, you know, it was one of the first times that we've described a new species um, using exclusively the video from our remotely operated vehicle. Um, and the species itself is a comb jelly. And it was a remarkably different type of animal uh, that we hadn't seen typically on our dive. So it was very exciting uh, to work with my colleagues, uh, Alan Collins uh, at NOAA Fisheries and Nick Bezio at the California State University in Monterey uh, to describe this discovery that we found in the deep ocean. Well, so comb jellies, as I understand, are actually not related to jellyfish. What are the differences between the two species? That's right. They are different. Um, typically, when people say jellyfish, um, they're usually referring to medusae, um, those animals that look like an umbrella uh, that you might encounter at mm -hmm. the beach. Uh, comb jellies are different. They have uh, a lot of rows of cilia in these combs, and that's what helps move them around. Uh, and typically, the comb jellies do not have the same type of stinging cells that you'd find on other forms of jellyfish. Well, why is this specific discovery so unique, and how long did it actually take? Yeah, it's, it's a great discovery. The big unique part was that we did do it virtually, that we did do it exclusively by using video from the remotely operated vehicle. Uh, as typical on expeditions, we would collect a sample, bring it back to the laboratory and study it under the mi microscope. We would do genetic an analysis on it. Um, that was not possible at this particular time. Uh, our remotely operated vehicle uh, in 2015 did not actually have uh, the device to sample an animal like this. So we uh, poured through the high definition video that we collected. Um, the expedition which was orchestrated by the NOAA Office of Ocean Exploration and Research, uh, has a remotely operated vehicle that has incredible capabilities. The, the resolution is so fantastic that we were able to analyze it and describe the different character, characteristics of this animal. Um, and, and that we found this animal at 4,000 meters, just 38 kilometers north of Puerto Rico, uh, was, was a fantastic uh, opportunity to bring this information about the ocean to bear. You know, I have a lovely ocean. I'm a certified scuba diver. I love all things water. And I think when you talk about how deep this discovery uh, was and the way in which you made the discovery, I wonder if you can, Mike, give our viewers some context of how vast this ocean is and how much of it remains unexplored and how so much of it is really still a mystery to people who've been studying it their entire lives. Yeah, the, the ocean is absolutely vast, and I can say it's um, almost completely unexplored. Uh, we're talking about a volume of the ocean that is, um, on average, about two and a half to three miles deep, covers three quarters of our globe. And that is the largest biome. It's the largest um, area that can inhabit life on our planet. And we've barely scratched the surface on exploring it. You know, at, at NOAA Fisheries, we are charged with the stewardship of, you know, uh, the ocean's marine resources. And, you know, it's such a large area to, to look at. So when you think about the fact that we had an opportunity to be part of an expedition that would dive to, to 4,000 meters, almost two and a half miles down and explore and find what's, what's going on here and find this new form of life there. Um, we were just very proud and excited to bring this um, new description of the ocean um, uh, to, to the country. I mean, when you say it 
in that way, two and a half miles. So if someone took their car, drove it two and a half <laughs> miles beneath the surface of the ocean, that's how far down this particular creature was. And the question now, Mike, is what kind of uh, possibilities does this raise, this particular discovery, about what else might actually be down there? Yeah, it is. Um, one thing that we learned is that every time um, we take one of these dives uh, with our remotely operated vehicle, every time we explore, every time we survey the deep ocean, we typically find new things. And that keeps telling us that um, there are so many different forms of life in the ocean that we've yet to encounter. And um, to be able to go down here, to be able to, to find this, indicates for us that there is just an abundance of new life that we haven't encountered. But our questions are just flooding our minds now with, now that we've encountered this animal and we've named it, uh, and we've described it in the literature, um, now we're wondering what, what role does it play in the marine food web? What role does it play in the ecology of the deep ocean? What does it do down there? How does it make its living? And that's, uh, I think, the exciting part of discoveries like this that that, that we make at NOAA, that we can begin to uh, develop an understanding of how the ocean works and use that understanding uh, to improve our daily lives. Dr. Michael Ford with NOAA, thanks very much for sharing your exciting discovery with us. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much.